was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my toe Till I met you well, I was breathing but not Alive And all my failures I try To hide It was my doom Till I met you Come You called my name And I ran out of that grave Good morning, IE Church family. I just want to welcome you guys to our church service online. My name is Roy. This is Alicia. Hi. We both uh, help lead and oversee the campus ministry here in Riverside. So if you're just tuning in for the very first time, I want to give you an even greater welcome to our family here. Uh, and, you know, I think feel like just a trend in today's time is when you tune in the news or you just look up an article, it can be very discouraging. We live in a very peculiar time. Um, but amidst all the bad news, uh, there is great news. Um, and God wants, God is a God of great news, right? God loves you. God wants to care for you, um, has compassion for you. 
And so amidst all the bad news, there can be great news. And so speaking of great news, uh, this past Tuesday, uh, Alicia and I actually just got engaged. Um, so if you see that ring right there, there you go. Um, so yeah, we're just really excited for that. Yeah, I did want to share a scripture. Obviously, there's a lot of good happening in our life, but this reminds me of just the good in general that God provides. It's in Ephesians 3 verse 20. It says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. And I know there's a lot of good happening for us, but I want to challenge and encourage you guys to look at the good happening in your life as well. Um, because God can do so much more than we can imagine, especially in the circumstance of this right. world. And I do want to just thank you guys. I feel like we would not be able to be here if it weren't for so many of you, our church yeah. family, who's helped us, molded us into the people that we are today. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you. Amen. And so to continue on with the rest of our service, bow your heads for a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, God, I just want to thank you so much for uh, just, God, who you are. Uh, you just want to take care of us, love us, care for us, uh, and you meet our needs, God. So I pray that we can just surrender everything to you this morning uh, and just have a great uh, church service, God. I pray that we can be attentive to the lesson. I pray that your word speaks life to us. Uh, but we love you so much, God, and I pray for everything in Mighty Son's name. Amen. Have a great Bye. Sunday, guys. Bye.
All right, good morning, church. Uh, it is great to be with you guys this morning. I uh, hope you're having a great time worshiping with your families. My name is Samuel Newman, and I'm over here in the Riverside group, and I get to lead us in our thoughts in the offering this morning. Uh, you know, when, when I was a young college student, even in high school, uh, I always thought, man, it's really easy to trust God with everything I got. I'm just good at it. I must be just naturally good at trusting God with everything in my life. And it's funny that I was so, I was probably a little arrogant in that area of my walk with God or, or really arrogant. But one of the reasons it was so easy for me to trust in God with everything I got is because I didn't have a lot. <laughs> I had no bills. I was really just focused on taking care of myself in life. Uh, and, and that was pretty much it. So not that I, you know, isn't good to trust God when you don't have a lot, but I didn't have a lot. So it was, it was easier to trust God with everything I had going on in front of me. And now I'm married. I've got a kid on the way. I'm thinking about 401k and retirement stuff and family vacations and X amount of thousand of diapers I'm going to need to buy and, 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 and so many other things. And so I found myself recently, okay, but this is a little bit harder to completely trust that God has everything I need to be fulfilled by, by him. And I could think, well, man, no money could really fulfill me or having this can really fulfill me or, or this. And, and it's crazy how, as I've gotten a little bit older here, I'm like, okay, I have a little bit more than I used to have. And wow, it can be really hard to trust God with everything I've got. I read the scripture in Hebrews 13, verse 5, and I want to read it with you guys here this morning. It says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. You know, I think I'm the type of guy in life who, once I get to a place in life, I always want the next thing. Um, I, I want I want to level up as soon as possible, and I have a really hard time with being content with everything I have. And so this morning, as we uh, give our offering, our weekly offering, I want us to think about two things, trust and being content with what you have. I think trust that, man, God has everything we need. He will fulfill every one of my needs. Uh, I don't have to worry about paying for thousands. I mean, I do got to worry about paying for thousands of diapers, but I don't worry about having all the money in the world to buy everything and feel content because God has everything I need. Uh, I got to be able to trust that. But then also learning to be content with what God has already given us. For me, the, the offering, being able to give our offering every week is an exercise of worship, but also it's a testament to my, my trust and how content I am with what God has already given me. And so this morning, as you give your offerings, you press that button on the app or however you give, uh, I want us to focus on how we can trust God, however little we have in our life or however much we have in our life, that we can trust him with everything, but that we can also focus on being content with what he's already given us. I think gratitude is an excellent place to give from. So this morning, trust and be content with what God has already given you. Let's go ahead and pray. God, thank you so much for this time this morning. Uh, God, I am, I am grateful for all the things you have given me. It seems like it could be so easy to go on a Facebook or social media and just get discouraged by countless things that, that, that need light, that need righteousness, that need saving from you, but it can just be very just depressing. And God, I do think there is a, uh, a good thing to seeing all the things, being content with what you have given us. God, I pray this morning as a family, as a community, we can give out of trusting you and out of being content with what you've already given us. God, thank you for this time. Be with the rest of the service. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen.
Hi, church family. It is uh, great to be with you. We're about to uh, do our last sermon, but before we started with that, we wanted to give you a little message from the family, uh, just to share how much we love. Caden, what would you want to say to the church? I'm going to miss you when we move to Boston, and thanks for all the presents you have given us. <laughs> he said he's going to miss you when we move to Boston, and thanks for all the presents that you gave. And you guys gave our kids probably more presents than we did. Uh, yeah, you, you, you've done a great job taking care of our kids. Okay, uh, what would you like to share? Thank you for loving our family and giving us all the gifts that you did. It's very special. And I wanted to say a special thank you for Savannah because your prayers that went up for her um, has really gotten her and our whole family to where we are today. She's about to go through another surgery probably before the end of the year um, to right all of her kidney issues. So please be praying for that. She is full of life. She is our little spunky girl oh, yeah. and almost walking. So thank you for just the countless hours of prayer for her specifically and for all of us. We love you guys so much. We love you. We love you. Thank you. It is a little surreal that we are here. Uh, we are going to be moving uh, in about two weeks, and uh, this will be the last time that Ashley and I speak to you on a, on a Sunday service. And uh, we just want to share how grateful we are. Uh, honestly, we wanted to take this time uh, just to be able to share stories and memories and be able to laugh together a little bit, cry maybe a little bit together, and uh, just share our hearts with you. Uh, this has been an incredible place. Uh, the Inland Empire in so many ways has been a place where our family has begun and been raised. And we had Caden here and Savannah was born here as well. And uh, Elle was only one and a half years old when we moved here. And uh, it has been a wild roller coaster, but one well worth it. And we just want to start off before we get into the lesson uh, by telling you how much we love you, how much you have meant to us, and uh, just the family that you've been for us during some of the darkest times and some of the greatest celebrations of our lives. Yeah, we, we honestly, it's hard to even think about all the relationships we have. Yeah. I feel emotional. I think you'll have to bear with me today because there's just so much love in our heart and there's so many faces and so many yeah. people just running through our minds. And like Stuart said, I really feel like you've allowed us to grow up here. That we were about halfway, you know, five years, six years into our marriage with one kid and now we have three kids and You've, you've been gracious to us, you've loved us, you've taught yeah. us, you've helped us learn so many lessons. And so those are some of the things we want to be able to share with you today, but we love you deeply and thank you for giving us this time. Absolutely. You know, we're going to continue our series, Rooted, and uh, as we're looking at passages in Ephesians, we're going to continue in Ephesians 6. Today's uh, message is entitled, Rooted in the Armor. It is kind of a fitting book of the Bible to look at as we're closing out our ministry tenure here in the Rancho Cucamonga ministry and in the Inland Empire. Uh, as you know, we know in Acts 20, we'll look at that in a little bit, that Paul, he really loved the Ephesians church. He loved the church in Ephesus with all of his heart. In fact, as he was saying goodbye to them before he went off to his death, he was weeping with them, weeping with the elders there. He loved this church. And so it's cool to be able to, to preach out of the, the book of Ephesians. We're going to be looking in Ephesians 6. We're going to start in verse 10. And, you know, this is kind of his closing chapter. As he's closing out all the things that he shared in, in Ephesians, this is really the culmination of everything. In Ephesians 6, verse 10, we're going to read a very famous passage, a passage that many of you already know and have heard many times before. But we're going to be able to share how the armor of God that he has given us is not just the things that we think of it as, but really it's the church family as well that surrounds yeah. us. And while we're here in quarantine and the COVID stuff, all that's going on in our world, we need the church family now more than ever. And we have been so blessed to be with you guys 
over some of the most formidable years that we've experienced in the ministry and in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we really believe we would not be where we are spiritually, where we're at, just even emotionally. We've gone through some stuff here in the IE. And you have matured us and shaped us and molded us to be able to go on to the next chapter of our journey with so much confidence that God is going to use us. Despite the stuff that we're dealing with, despite emotionally trying to get right, we know that God is going to have us exactly where he wants us all along the way because of the years of being here and what God's done through this church. In Ephesians 6, verse 10, let's read. Paul writes, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. You know, as we look at this passage, I love that he starts out talking about the Lord has mighty power. You know, it feels like the government has mighty power. The world has mighty power. It can feel like a lot of other things other than the Lord has mighty power. But truly, it is God that has all the power. Yeah. He's the one that's allowing the restaurants to get shut down. He's the one allowing the schools to go into virtual mode or homeschool or whatever. This is not just the power of the dark world that we live in. And yet we can feel like, man, where is God in all of this? God is the one with all the power. And I just want to give an encouragement to any mom out there. I don't want to just say the moms, even the dads, if you guys are homeschooling, whoever's doing the virtual school right now and having your children be at home and having them be in front of a computer for like seven hours, God bless you. I am so thankful for you. And, you know, we, and the we are so grateful for the teachers that are willing to do this, for the people that have to change their schedules. I just want you to hear it. You're awesome. You're not going to hear it enough, I promise, this year. You're not going to hear it enough for all that you're doing, but you're amazing. Yeah. You're incredible, and you need a round of applause every day that you're doing all that you're doing to work, to be at home with the kids, to be at home with the younger ones, and teach your kids, I'm proud of you yeah. as a church family. But God is in control of all of this. Now, as it continues on, look at what he says. It says, for our struggle, in verse 12, is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Let that simmer in. Let that just permeate in your soul for a second. This fight, it's not against people. This fight is not against politicians. This fight is not against your neighbors. This fight is not against people of a different race. This fight is not against people that have different political views mm -hmm. than you. This fight is not against any person on this earth. And, you know, over the last six years, there's been a lot of opportunities to make the issue people. And maybe the issue has been with me. And I want you to tell you the issue is not with me. The issue is with Satan. And my issue, if I've ever had issues with people, it's not with you. It's the issue is with Satan. That really, that really what's going on in our dark world right now is that Satan is having a field day making it about people. You know, as I've learned over the last six years and still learning even through this time of 2020, Satan is absolutely crafty when it comes to making it about people and not really putting the target where it belongs. Yeah. That he's the problem. It's not people. It's him. It's Satan that's the problem. And so as we look at this armor of God that we need to put on if we're going to be rooted in Christ, really I want you to consider that God has all the power and that the issues you're facing are against the spiritual realm and Satan. They're not against the people that are living all around you or the people on the news or the teachers that are driving you nuts with your kids or your husband or your wife. Yeah. They are against Satan. Let's dig in as we continue in verse 13. Therefore, therefore, because it's not against the people, it's against Satan. Therefore, let's put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, 
with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. I love what Paul is saying here as he's wrapping up his letter to the church in Ephesus, this church that he deeply loves. He says, guys, I want you to know God has all the power. And that truly has is, is been made obvious. God is all-powerful. The second thing he wants to make clear is the issue is not against flesh and blood. The issues that we can have can seem like they're against people, but they're not. They're against Satan. Yeah. Let's get the target in the right place. How do we do that? How do we get rooted in the scriptures, get rooted in Christ to be able to, to combat those things, the, those lies that God is not all-powerful, or those lies that the issues are with people? is we put on the armor of God. And as we look at the armor of God, Ashley and I wanted to be able to just share how these different pieces of armor have really been representative through the church and represented by you. I'm so excited to be able to just kind of go down memory lane a little bit here. You know, as we start off and we look at the belt of truth, I think about when my dad passed away. And, you know, we're coming up. I can't even believe this. January will be four years since my dad has passed away. And uh, it's just, it is heartbreaking in some ways that it's been that long. It's also kind of, uh, uh, it gives my mind a little bit of ease. I'm more at peace about his death because so much time has passed. But it's kind of a surreal thing. If you've ever lost someone that is really close to you. You know what I'm talking about. The time gives you more peace and surrender that they're gone, but it also makes you sad that more life has gone by without them by you. And, uh, and just thinking about how you have helped me as a church. You know, obviously we lived in, in, down there in Riverside. I, I remember the potlucks. If you guys remember the potlucks, I remember that the Arevalo family always won the award every single time. Every time we'd have a cook-off, they would win. Yeah. I will say, she did use in her soup some MSG, which was a secret ingredient, but it tasted amazing. So why would you ever stop? It was almost unfair how much you guys would win. But you know what? We kept giving you the award anyways. And uh, I remember being at the temple, and I... I don't know if you guys remember, but the, all the power went out. It was like three in the afternoon. Oh the gosh. rains were coming down. It was flooding all, all around us in Riverside. And then all the power goes out right in the middle of Sergio's preaching. And, uh, and so we, we just sit there. The AC goes out. It's really humid and hot. And we just keep rolling. And we just keep having the service. That, that was, those were such crazy memories and crazy times. But as I was down and we moved to Las Sierra, that's when my dad passed away. And so really I got the benefit of having the Riverside Church family be so supportive through the time when my dad was passing and then did pass. And the recovery time there, being there for another year as we were sorting through our thoughts and trying to figure out what was the next step, what was God had in store for our lives. And then we moved up to the Rancho ministry and uh, we're with you guys. And through all of those transitions and those times, you were a belt of truth for me yeah. and you were a rock for us and for our family when it felt like I, I don't know how we're going to be able to do this. Yeah. I, I felt so much depression and grief and yet you were there guiding me back to scripture, guiding me back to the truth that God would never forsake us. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you for the ways that you loved us through those really dark, dark times in my life. Yeah, and I just wanted to say, because we have been through quite a bit in these last few years, yeah. and I just remember so many of the women being that belt of truth for me, because in some ways my faith hadn't been rocked like it did when, when we were here. And I remember just four months after moving here, we had a one and a half year old, we wanted to have another child, yeah. and we experienced the heartbreak of a miscarriage. 
And I remember so many of you down in Riverside just crying with me, praying with me, totally. helping me get to a place of we're not always going to understand the why in hardship, but we can keep trusting God and you can keep giving him your heart. I remember coming back from the hospital with Savannah after she had been in the hospital for about two months and just the amount of, of faith that we borrowed from people. You would give us the truth. You would give us the word of God. You would help us remember that he was worth trusting even through these hills and valleys. And Another special thing um, that was the belt of truth for me in these last few months, well, I guess it was early on in the year this year, was the mind-body class that I was able to Come facilitate. On. And honestly, you guys are part of that. I felt like we were rediscovering God's truth together yeah. because we had been through so much emotionally, so much pain, physical pain, and that we got to rediscover the truth of God and yeah. how he carries us through our pain. And so I just want you to, to know how much that meant for me. It did so much for my own faith in God and just helped me recenter so much of, of my walk and my life. Um, but thank you for being that belt of truth for me. Absolutely. You know, God's family, you, you as our family, have totally been a belt of truth. And we just want to say thank you for the ways that you steered us back to the truth. When Satan yeah. was, was hard at work to rock our faith, to make us not want to do the ministry anymore at times, or feel like, can I do it anymore? You were there yeah. cheering us on. You were some of the greatest cheerleaders of our lives, and we can't thank you enough. You know, the second thing is the breastplate of righteousness. You know, I want to share a little bit about something that has been kind of taboo. I, I, as a young church leader, I, I haven't known how it, to always talk about it. I've tried to toe the line, and uh, but now we're, we're moving and we're transitioning, so I, I wanna speak pretty candidly here with you. Uh, but I just wanted to share how thankful I was, and I am, of the righteousness of the church during this time with all that transitioned with Mike and Libby, and uh, all that transpi transpired there over the last year and a half. It was extremely challenging to know how to be righteous. On one hand, you want to take a stand. On, on, you want to say what needs to be said. You don't want to be disloyal uh, to God or to people, but at the same time, you want to speak where you need to speak, and you want to shut up and be silent where you need to be silent. And that line was very blurry for me often. And uh, it was hard to know, am I being righteous when I'm speaking up, or am I being unrighteous and gossiping? Am I saying what needs to be said, or am I tarnishing the church by, by taking credit or apologizing for too much? Am I saying things that is, is bad taste, or does it need to be expressed and apologized for? And it was a very challenging kind of tightrope to, to walk this past year and a half of what to say and how to say it in a way that's edifying and building up but also calling the things out that need to be said. And I just want to share personally, I can't share you, you know, everyone by name or anything, but there were so many of you that were so encouraging, but yet you were always calling me back to making sure, are you being righteous? Yeah. Are you being rooted in righteousness in how you talk? Mm -hmm. And I, I can't tell you how much that meant to me because I felt really exposed, I felt nervous, I felt scared, I felt insecure of what to say, and yet to have those phone calls, to have those email updates afterwards, to have those encouragements after the sermons, yeah. it went so far. I don't think you know what it means, because everyone assumes that those things are being said all the time, and yet the majority of the time, ministers can feel like negativity is all that comes towards them. Yet with the church, I felt so much encouragement in how we were trying to handle it. And when I'd mess up, you let me know with encouragement though. And you would admonish me with love. And I felt that love. And so I just want to share how grateful we are for the breastplate of righteousness yeah. that you as a church have been for Ashley and I. Mm -hmm. And steering young evangelists and women's ministry leaders into understanding how to do this. Mm -hmm. This is very uncharted territory for us. Yeah. Uh, to say it's uncharted is an understatement. Yeah. And yet you steered us and you guide us and you went, ooh, you went a little too far there. You need to pull back on it. Okay, okay. Or ooh, you didn't say enough. You need to apologize more about, okay, okay, I can hear that. I'm so grateful 
that you are in our lives. So I'm grateful for the talks. I'm grateful for the love. I can't tell you what that's meant to us. We love you very, very much. And part of the reason we love you so much and felt so loved is because of the breastplate of righteousness you were to us. Yes, and I experienced that as well. I think there is such, there's a deep righteousness in this church. And yeah. the amount of people that have served us and brought us meals and cleaned our home, like deep cleaned our home, you know who you are. Um, For like eight hours. Who watched our kids <laughs> and really raised them up. And that sister that, that cleaned our house for eight hours also really challenged me on my cleanliness of the garage. <laughs> Thank you, Majay Scott. <laughs> Thank you for challenging me. She said, this is not a good environment for your kids to live in in this garage. You need to clean this up. And we did because we did. you're a disciple. We did. <laughs> But even the babysitters over the years, you did not receive enough compensation for all you did for us. Yeah. But we are so thankful that you that, that even when we have people that we can trust because yeah. of your deep righteousness. In the world, I would talk to these different moms at L School and they'd be like, how do you find these people? They're such incredible people that yeah. you trust your kids with. And that has meant so much to me. Yeah. And I also just wanted to thank I feel like there is a, a deep righteousness in our older members within our congregation. I just remember in, in Riverside and in Rancho, walking into fellowship, walking into the sanctuary with my crazy kids, and you asked, Ashley, how are you doing? And you genuinely wanted to know. You genuinely took an interest in my kids. Whether they were friendly that day or not, you engaged with them. You wanted to know them. And I can't tell you just what that righteousness, yeah. the consistency of righteousness and love and warmth, yeah. what that did to our hearts. But it made us feel so safe. You know, the next thing is a shield of faith. You know, as we came in to leading this church, I had a lot of new ideas of what to do in Rancho. And I was full of new ideas. And I know that some of you loved it. You ate it up and you shared it with me how much you loved yes. it. Others of you hated it. And you also shared with me <laughs> how much you didn't like all the newness. And it was a little it was a little jarring and shocking how many new things that we did at once. And I don't know whether to apologize or say thank you or you're welcome. Uh, probably it's somewhere in the middle of that, that I probably should have done as many new things, but the new things that we did still were kind of encouraging. But, yes. you know, I, I just, I want to say thank you for how much you were willing to go on this ride with us. This was the first time we ever led a church yep. and you were willing to try new stuff. You were willing to encourage me when I blew it and messed up. You were willing to uh, inspire us to keep going and, and, and applaud us when the ideas were successful. But you really bought in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know many other churches that would have bought in to as many new ideas, especially coming off the heels of what we just come off. That probably wasn't the wisest. And yet you still went with us. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tell you how thankful I am that you were that shield of faith. Because what the shield of faith does is it extinguishes the flaming arrows. Mm -hmm. And Satan threw a lot of arrows our way, and especially my way, when it came to just disbelief. Mm -hmm. I, I know I preached in Rancho about the Hail Mary thoughts, the thoughts that Satan doesn't think will work, but they're just crazy out yeah. there thoughts. And he threw a lot of crazy out there thoughts about how much I stink, about how I'm not good at this, how I can't do it, how no one can relate to me, or I, I'm not connecting enough, or I'm not, wh whatever. A lot of different thoughts that he would throw my way. And yet, you were a shield of faith, that you would go with me, you would go on the journey with me, you would do the Enneagram series with us, and the Transform series with us, try new, new stuff. And I want to say thank you for that. I also want to say a thank you um, to the staff, for being our shield of faith because there has been a lot of transition over the last few years. And I think about just how the Arguellos and us kind of shape, they shaped our thinking when we were down in Riverside and they really protected us from so much and gave us a lot of faith for what we could do and try in the campus yep. ministry, but also in transitioning to leading this church. And I think to all the staff members, I feel like the Sweeney's have been such a shield of faith and just helping us yep. process so many different things, the highs and the lows. And then to our Rancho staff and just the friendship, 
honestly, the family that we feel with you guys, totally. the Alhin family, we just feel like we will be family with you forever. Yeah. And we feel so thankful for you and the support um, and the faithfulness of John and Michaela and how they've given. Thank you for being that shield for us and helping us through so much. You know, next is the helmet of salvation. And when I think about the IE, one of the most encouraging, inspiring parts of being here has been just all that God did in the campus ministry. You know, as we think about the last six years, it was six years, August 1st, and uh, all that God has done over these last six years is just so inspiring. Yeah. I think I was counting, we have like nine married couples from the leadership team uh, from the years of, of campus ministry here. And uh, many of them in the ministry, it's just very inspiring what God did. And I remember going to a fall retreat and uh, we had at that time about 105 college students. We had 50 plus visitors. I think we had 55 visitors at that retreat there in the desert. And uh, the majority of them had kind of some kind of compensation or some kind of sponsorship by you. And I remember we put out a, a call yeah. to the church, you know, can you give 50 bucks per uh, visitor to pay half their, 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 their registration? And we ended up getting almost all 50 covered, yeah. uh, you know, half of the registration by you guys. Yeah. What church does that? I mean, so that, that, is, that is a church that's committed to helping baptize young people. Yeah. And I want to just encourage you. That is who you are. Mm -hmm. You are a church that loves the youth, that loves teen ministry, campus ministry, the young teen ministry, the preteens, the kingdom kids, you're invested. Don't lose that yeah. because that is a gift. That is a shining jewel of this church is how much you love the youth and so grateful for just the, the helmet of salvation yeah. that you brought to the campus ministry. A campus ministry does not baptize 30 plus students each year because it's just a great campus ministry. It's because it's part of an amazing church. Mm -hmm. People want to be a part of that church family, and that's why a campus ministry grows. Yeah. And I want to encourage you, you were so much a part of those conversions over the last six years that we saw in the campus ministry. And when I think of the Helmet of Salvation and just what, what it does to our hearts, that it protects our thoughts, it guides us, the, the joy that I was able to find in converting some of the young marrieds in this new group that we led this year was just so refreshing. And being able to study with Kristen and Will and Carla and now Savannah, I just feel like you guys have been such a joy and have just reminded us what life is all about. When you help someone become a Christian, you are brought back to the root of who you want to be as a disciple, as someone who walks with God yeah. and loves God. And thank you for allowing us to be part of your journey in so many ways. Yeah, you know, as we close out uh, the armor of God, the last thing there is the sword of the spirit. And, you know, as you think of the sword of the spirit, it's the word of God. The church that we're a part of, guys, is rooted yeah. in God's word. Yeah. And I just want to tell you that I am so proud of all the members of the church that taught classes mm -hmm. for the Transform series. I'm so proud of the church. I mean, even as I would call you guys, you were just excited. I, there was not even a hesitation from any one of you to teach the class. It was, I'm totally in. Mm -hmm. I love the idea. Let's make it happen. I've got stuff already I've been thinking about. You know, when it came to asking people to preach, because I went from being in a rotation to being the pulpit preacher on Wednesdays and Sundays. And uh, there were so many members of the church that would be sprinkled in there and willing at a moment's notice to pop up there and preach an amazing message. And, uh, and like I said earlier, when it came to your righteousness, you would constantly call me back to God's word. And uh, it wasn't like you just admonished me with your opinions, but you'd give me your thoughts because of the biblical evidences that yes. you had. And uh, I love the rooted nature of this church in God's word. I love so much. It was so enjoyable preaching God's word to you because even as I would preach, you know, it was so much fun because it was just, there was a call for, we need depth. We want to get deeper in God's word. And so there were all these nuggets that I would find in God's word and it would excite me because of how you pushed me to go deeper yeah. in my word. And uh, I just want to tell you, it's been a pleasure to preach the word of God to you. 
It has been so much fun. This has been the most fun season of my life in preaching mm -hmm. because of how much you love God's word and eat it up. And it pushes me to go even deeper in my understanding. So thank you for how you've pushed me in my understanding of God's word. We love you guys so much, honestly, for, for those of you, even individually who have helped me yeah. um, personally come back to the word of God, have talks with me, challenge me confront me in different ways, but just encourage me to keep yep. walking with God. We have so needed you and feel so indebted to you. Yeah. As we close out here in Acts 20, Paul is spending time with the elders in Ephesus. And uh, he, he calls the elders of Ephesus to come and meet with them. He's, he's on his, his journey, and uh, he, he knows that this is the last time he's going to spend with them. As I referenced earlier uh, in today's lesson, you know, it, it's in Acts 20. It says, as he says all these things, he's weeping, and they're kissing and crying and just mourning the loss of what is going to happen in the future that they Paul says you'll never see my face again and so these are his last words to him he writes in verse 17 from Miletus Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church when they arrived he said to them you know how I lived uh, the whole time I was with you from the first day I came into the province of Asia I served the Lord with great humility and with tears Although I was severely tested by the plots of the Jews, you know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit wants me uh, warns me that prison and hardship are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Mm -hmm. And as we read this passage and end out, this is what I feel. You know, as, as I look at this, there have been a lot of tears about this decision. I know the last time I shared with the group it was a much more somber tone. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, even in this journey for the last two months, God has done a lot in our hearts. I know many of you ask, how are you doing? Because the last time that we talked, it was, I need some help. Yeah. And I'm not in a great spot. I'm not in a great spot emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, even spiritually, I'm not in a great spot. And I want to share with you that this last couple months has just been really reforming for my soul. And I think even as we're going in this next journey, as we're going in this next step, the, the, the things that you've taught us and the things that you've shown us, the ways that you've helped, uh, helped us put the armor of God on will never be forgotten. Uh, this is a place that's a very near and dear to our hearts. And so although I still feel similar things, of it, it's time for us to move and it's time for us to take on this next chapter, next challenge of our lives, I just want to share, we are extremely grateful. We love you. You know, even as Paul was sharing, he said, you know, I've shared with all humility. I, I don't know if I've shared with all humility all the time. I've tried to be really humble with you. Uh, but I really do feel like Ashley and I have poured ourselves out for the church. And yet the church has poured yourselves into us in such amazing ways. We love you. We are so grateful for you. At this time, we are going to take communion together as a church family. And as we meditate on the cross and we meditate that why we have the opportunity to be able to put on this armor, we have the opportunity because of Jesus dying on the cross, because of the cross and the ways that he sacrificed for us to have an opportunity to put on this armor, to recognize that God has all the power, mm -hmm. that this battle is not against flesh and blood, but against Satan, against the evil one. And yet we have everything to combat. Because we have the church family, we have his word, we have the righteousness that he puts in our souls. And guys, we love you. Let's pray for the communion right now. Dear God, thank you for the time to be able to share, the time to be able to look at your word. God, it is with uh, just heavy hearts but encouraged hearts that we share this last message. God, we pray that you would be with the Inland Empire Church. God, we pray that you would be with the Rancho Ministry. God, we pray you at the desert and with Riverside. 
God, that you guide this church family in their journey. You guide the Maine's family. God, thank you as we take time to meditate on the cross. God, none of this would be possible without your son. And God, we do want to say how grateful we are for the cross, for Jesus dying on the cross. We're grateful that you recognized that it's against Satan and it's against the evil forces and that it's not against us, even though we can be absolutely awful at times. And God, you just continue to look at us with love, not as enemies, but as friends. God, we pray that you would be with us as we take communion. Help us to connect with these things. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you.
Are you ready to praise the name of the Lord? Come on. Sing the oh, oh, oh. You are good and your mercy endures.